world boyfriend back with another pickup video got a lot of stuff to show today uh, yeah it has been a busy I don't want to say last month because I don't do these monthlies but it's been a busy last filling of the box in fact I don't know if you can see here's the top of the box this box is full I couldn't even shut it I uh, got a lot of stuff to show mostly Super Nintendo which is what we're gonna start with today so why don't we jump right in and get to it first one Bass Masters Classic Pro Edition. Don't know what uh, separates this from the regular edition, um, nor have I played it, but it's a fishing game. Woo, fishing games. Where am I gonna put all these? Let's put them down there. Okay, next one. Faceball 2000. Yeah, that classic. Now, the special thing here is it actually completes a subset. That's right, another subset is complete, and that is all the first-person shooter games on the Super Nintendo. Of course, if you know, there's only three first-person shooter games on the Super Nintendo, not counting Super Noah's Ark 3D. We got uh, Faceball 2000, Doom, and Wolfenstein 3D. So technically, there's four uh, if you count Super Noah's Ark, and Faceball completed that subset. Uh, here we go, Rap Jam Volume 1. Now this is interesting because you get to play basketball with a bunch of 90s hip hop stars. It's, uh, it's pretty funny, it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's a neat little, neat little gem as far as basketball games go. Uh, Alright, Cannondale Cup. Now this one grabbed my attention more, uh, more so than it just being a bicycle racing game. I couldn't care less about that, but I liked all the cool stickers on it from Mega Video. Uh, I don't know if you can see there, it says Mega Video. Uh, on the back, there's some Mega Video stickers. Uh, where the heck is, oh, if this label is broken, you must purchase this video. Look at that warning. Ooh, that's stern. Now, I don't know where Mega Video uh, is or where this came from maybe someone out there knows but um, I love when I find these stickers and stuff as long as it's not going to cause too much damage to the actual um, front sticker I'm okay with it and I love seeing all these weird little uh, stickers from the past uh, here's another one uh, with a very boring sticker from the past but that's not the reason I got it and that is Barkley shut up and jam now uh, whenever I go to a store or wherever and I'm looking for a game and I can't, nothing's jumping out at me, I'll just go back to my list and go alphabetically, right? And just go, okay, so I got all the A's, now I'm moving on to the B's. And this one um, was one that had just been staring me down forever. And I was like, where the heck? I've never seen Barkley Shut Up and Jam. It's not a rare game at all. Uh, it's not even uncommon, I don't think, but I would never see it. And so I saw it and I was like, holy crap. Barkley, shut up and jam. I was far more excited than I ever needed to be. Needless to say, I picked it up, and now we're moving on down the line. Uh, this one, turn and burn. No fly zone. I'll be honest, I have not tested this game yet. Couldn't tell you what it is. I'm assuming it's some sort of jet flying game, maybe similar to Afterburner? I don't know. I, I, I honestly, I could be completely wrong. Turn and burn. No fly zone. Uh, okay, so this next one uh, is actually kind of funny. It has a little story behind it. So Layla, or as you might know, her girlfriend recently was in Seattle filming uh, a pilot, which is the first episode of a television series. Uh, that's all we can say on that. Hopefully it gets picked up. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yay! But anyway, uh, while she was there, I didn't get to go, unfortunately, but while she was there, I was like, you got to check out some of the game stores around there. And uh, the, anybody who's from or familiar with the Seattle area knows there's a lot of game stores and so she happened to be close to one and I said go check it out and it was one of those pink gorilla uh, game stores that you may have seen on numerous other channels here on the YouTubes uh, anyway I gave her a list of what I was looking for and the only thing uh, she came back with was uh, this guy and that is Paperboy 2 yeah uh, not as exciting as I had hoped uh, but nonetheless, girlfriend did a great thing, picked me up a game, uh, helping me complete my SNES collection. So thank you, girlfriend. Love ya. And uh, moving on. So Pink Gorilla, Seattle. Thank you as well. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, we got Pinball Dreams, which is one of the uh, 
there's Pinball Fantasies and Pinball Dreams on the Super Nintendo. Uh, I tried this for a second, of course. Remember, I can only play these games for up to five minutes when I test them because I'm still doing the Cartridge Club One Console Challenge. That's the challenge. That's right. I'm still in it. I'm still rocking the Sega Genesis. Um, that being said, I played a couple of these. Mm, didn't really uh, stand out to me as anything special. So there you go, Pinball Dreams. Uh, Dino City, another confession, I have not played this game. I've been really busy. Oh, by the way, we're in the uh, new uh, apartment that we moved to. Did, can you even tell? It looks the exact same, right? Well, the one difference is the majority of the light is coming from this side. So my right, your left, whereas all the other videos, the, the um, majority of the light came from this side, which how weird is that? So uh, anyway, back to Dino City, haven't played it yet. That's all I gotta say about that. Uh, okay, Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures. Now this one I played for a second. What a weird kind of game. It's almost like a point and click type uh, game. I don't even know how to describe it to be honest, so I'm not even gonna try. Uh, yeah, Pac-Man 2, nothing like the original Pac-Man to say the least. Uh, this one should be so much better than it is. Math Blaster. Episode 1. So, uh, obviously, never made it to Episode 2. Um, but Math Blaster is a... Uh, I guess it would be an educational game where you're first-person view in, like, a spaceship and you're shooting asteroids and doing math. So, um, it's, it's almost too simple, though. I wish there was more variety. And maybe there is. I only played the first couple stages, I guess. Um, but I like the idea. I just wanted more. Does that make sense? So there's that, okay. Man, that was only about half of what I'm showing for Super Nintendo, so here we go. I'll try and speed through these a little bit more. GP1 from Atlas, little uh, uh, racer game. What the heck, motorbike, speed bike? What do you call them? Crotch Rockets, it's a crotch rocket racer game. Uh, and following that is GP1 2, or GP1 Part 2, as the top label says. So, uh, yeah. Get your crotch rocket racing on. Robocop 3, which uh, I played for a second and actually resembles the Robocop on the Game Boy. So was Robocop on the Game Boy, which was, which was actually, it looked like it was representing the first film. Was it actually representing the third film? Or was this film, or this game, representing the first film when it was supposed to be representing the third film? I'm assuming this more represents the third film and the Game Boy game was lying. Do you guys know? Let me know. Uh, Clay Fighter Tournament Edition. Another subset complete. Got all the Clay Fighter games. There's only three on the Super Nintendo, but uh, Tournament Edition. I'm assuming this adds a couple more characters. I'm not sure to be honest, but that's mostly uh, what Tournament Editions are. Uh, did, I, did I complete any other subsets? No. Um, here we go. Joe and Mac. This is actually the first one. I have the second one. So I guess that's a subset if you count that. It's only two games, but uh, now I have them both. So hooray! All right, now we're getting to some of the more fun stuff, except this game. Super Aquatic Games. Again, haven't played this one. Haven't had a lot of time to test these games, but uh, the label's nice and crisp and it's a good, good uh, copy, so I picked it up. Uh... Cubert 3, subset complete. I now have all the games on the Super Nintendo that start with the letter Q. Little trivia, in case you didn't know, there's only one game on the Super Nintendo that starts with the letter Q, and that is Cubert 3, so subset complete. Uh, Saturday Night Slam Masters, little wrestling game from Capcom. Uh, I know you can actually play as... Uh, Hagar from um, the Final Fight series, which is kind of cool. There you go. Uh, this is kind of an uncommon game, so uh, it's a sports game, and sometimes it's hard to nail down what's uncommon, what's common, what you should get. A rule of thumb, though, with the Super Nintendo is soccer games tend to be more on the uncommon to rare side than the common side, just as a heads up. And this is an uncommon game. It's Gosh, let's see, World Soccer 94, Road to Glory. So you don't run across this one very much. Uh, if you see it and you're going for a whole set, pick it up. There you go, that's one of those uh, 
hard to find games. You don't want to get to the end and you're looking for that. Who wants to look for a soccer game? Those are boring. Um, oh man, I never realized this label's kind of got some sort of weird stuff on it. Oh well. Top Gear 2. Uh, racing game. I believe this is the most uncommon of the three on the Super Nintendo. Top Gear, Top Gear 2, and Top Gear 3000. I think I only have that one though. Uh, here's another Simpsons game. Okay, a genuine Simpsons product, as the label would have you believe. And that is the Itchy and Scratchy game. Uh, so this is kind of a platformer. Uh, getting close to finishing the Simpsons game subset. I only need Krusty's Super Fun House or whatever that game is. Uh, which is uh, actually, I think, the easiest one to find. So there you go. Now these next two games, gosh darn it, I got off of Instagram. I wish I could remember the chap's name who... I got them from, I'll try and put, them, uh, put an annotation, because uh, I can't remember for the life of me right now. But I got two games from him, the first of which is Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego? So there is two Carmen Sandiego games for the Super Nintendo, Where in Time and Where in the World. This, is the, uh, this would be the geography um, game versus the historical game uh, with Where in Time. Uh, educational game, never run across these. This is the first time I've ever seen this in real life. Um, so I was, I was excited to pick that up. And the other game I got was Power Instinct. Now this is the more uncommon game of the two. This is actually the one I wanted more. Um, but I bundled it up and got a good deal. This is a, another fighting game for the Super Nintendo. They're a dime a dozen, right? Um, but gotta get them all. All right, uh, four Super Nintendo games left. This next one is for my boy. J-Rock the Game Rocker. It's not actually for you, it's for me, but I want to show you because J-Rock is actually looking for this game right now and I happen to pick it up and that is Operation Thunderbolt. So he's looking for it because he wants to complete his uh, Super Scope subset. This is the only game he has left to get. Sorry J-Rock, I need this game too. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't um, aware that it was compatible with the Super Scope, but that's good to know. It's kind of a rail shooter uh, game uh, yeah, real shooter. Um, all right, Super Adventure Island. Uh, again, I have Super Adventure Island 2, needed the first one, much like Joe and Mac, and now I got it. This is uh, much more in line with the original Adventure Island games, whereas Super Adventure Island 2 kind of strays away from that and is more of like a, uh RPG adventure game. Uh, anyway, there's that. Uh, and probably the most uncommon game of the lot. I didn't get any heavy hitters for Super Nintendo this time, but this one is one I've been looking for, and unfortunately, it's from my mortal enemy, Koei. Uh, it is Romance of the Three Kingdoms 3, Dragon of Destiny. Boy, you can really feel this is a heavy cart, too, so it's got, uh, it's got a big board inside, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, one of those uh, strategy war type games, just boring, boring in my opinion. Um, but my buddy over at the STC podcast, Joe, he gets into these games for some reason. I'll never understand it. And he recently picked this one up too. So anyway, good label. Had to get it. Ah, Koei. I got one more Super Nintendo game. It's actually not that special. Uh, aside from the fact that I got it complete in box, which is rare. I don't usually go for complete in box games, but I found this one. It was like five bucks. Uh, and that is Super Tennis. So, uh... The only downside is it didn't come with the inside cardboard that holds the game in. It's just the game, the manual, and the outside box. So that's kind of a bummer. Nonetheless, it's a nice box, so I picked it up. And that's all for Super Nintendo. Woo! You still with me? Holy crap. Now I got a couple uh, Sega Genesis games. So I've been really trying to stick with this one console challenge. It has been incredibly difficult, I will admit. Um, I'm... I'm this close to, to throwing in the towel, but I'm trying to hang in there. And I picked up a couple games, um, hoping to turn my uh, thoughts around on the system. <laughs> anyway, uh, the first one is Aladdin. And this I picked up uh, because I've always wanted to play it, and I know it's different from the Super Nintendo version, um, but Ramvox, Ramvox recommended this. And uh, it's pretty good, I will admit. I like it. Um, it's, it's hard. I don't know which one I would say I like better. 
uh, the Super Nintendo or this one. I've only gotten to the Cave of Wonders, one little Cave of Wonders in this so far, but I'm gonna uh, go back and play it. I might actually play it today some more. Uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't come with the manual, so that's a bummer, but I can always pick that up down the road. Not too bad. I was, I was more just into getting the game, and it came with the box, so woo! That's always good. And then the second one I got, uh, I forgot who recommended this, um, but if you're out there, let me know. Uh, I picked up Fantasy Star 3, Generations of Doom. Now this one is actually in great condition. It is complete with the manual, and uh, I picked it up. I'm not a big RPG guy, but I thought if I'm gonna stay in this challenge, I gotta find a game that that isn't a platformer or a beat 'em up or something that I can beat in an hour or so. You know what I mean? So I thought, ah, I'll give an RPG a try. So I put the feelers out and I said, what RPG uh, should I get for the the Sega Genesis? And someone said Fantasy Star 3, and I saw it. They said this was the best one of the Fantasy Star series. Is that true? What do you guys think? Let me know. So that's what I got for the Genesis. Only a couple things left. Uh, first one, can't believe. I can't believe I'm saying this. I bought an Amiibo. That's true. It's true. I finally went down that rabbit hole. I don't think I'm going to go any further, though. I'm re I, don't, I really don't. The only reason I got this, and you'll see why in a second, is I couldn't resist. I had to. I had to. I've been passing it up for too long. Can you guess who it is? I bet you know. That's right. It's the Blue Bomber himself, Mega Man. And you'll see, I took him out of his package. You know why? Because it's stupid to keep him in the package. Uh, and I wanted to touch and hold and feel him and place him on shelves. And I didn't want him obstructed by some silly plastic packaging. So I took them out. And there you have it. Uh, and that is the only Amiibo I think I will ever get. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, and now, final two games. They are actually for the Game Boy. That's right, couple more Game Boy games. First one is actually uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, one of those black carts. And it is Mega Man Extreme, speaking of the Blue Bomber. Now this one, um, I got uh, because I have Mega Man Extreme 2. So again, another little subset complete. I needed the, the first one, got the second one. Now I got it, pretty good, pretty good copy. And finally, the creme de la creme. I will admit, it's nothing too crazy this time, but I have been looking for this game forever and I just randomly stumbled across it and I picked it up. It's not in the best condition. The cart has a lot of yellowing on it, but the label itself is pretty good. So uh, I'm pretty happy about that, and I'm pretty sure I can clean the card up somewhat. But that is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 Radical Rescue. So uh, again, another subset complete. I have all three Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games for the Game Boy. Uh, this, by far, being the hardest one to get. And I'll be honest, never saw this in real life until I found this. So uh, it's very... Very cool that I found that, and I can't wait to play it. And that's all I got. Holy crap, been going nuts with Super Nintendo lately. But again, I'm getting down to those less expensive games. I'm getting some good deals. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I haven't been seeing a lot of the spendier games, so I don't know if that's a trend that's going to continue. But nonetheless, I'm done talking. I'm getting out of here. Boyfriend, out. Thanks for watching.